Garfield, King of Liberty. Author's Note I heard children of America were not educated in history, and I wrote this story for educational entertaining. I hope you are learning and having fun while reading this. It was the year 1770X, and the Empire of England was spreading terror with conquest. King George III was invading lands of plunder for lasagna. With lasagna, King George III fueled robotic army of mechanical menace. America was last hope, and King George III was determined with determination to rule it for lasagna conquest and steal its precious lasagna resource. Founding fathers and the Constitution were at constitutional conventions discussing plans for last resistance. George Washington, you must fight for American freedom and lead us to victory, said the Constitution with orders. Do not be fool. George Washington is not man enough for such responsibility, argued Thomas Jefferson with disagreements. He is right. I alone cannot fight the fight for freedom. George Washington cried with tears. You! Insolence! If no one is man enough to fight for freedom, America will fall! Scolded the Constitution with anger. Fear not, for I have found the true man and warrior of freedom. Benjamin Franklin reassured with confidence. What? Cried out everyone with surprise. It is true. Look with your heart and your eyes will believe, said Benjamin Franklin pointing at figure in the doorway. In doorway walked orange figure of amazing power. His muscles rippled with American pride and freedom. As he walked in, rock and music played, and giant American flag waved behind him. As he stepped, cawing eagles were heard. Garfield! cried out everyone in shock. This is right, you founding failures. Time to stop your tears and ready the fists of war, Garfield said with scolding words. But English armies are outnumbering us by many men. Thomas Jefferson anguished with despair. I'm the Minute Man. I only need one minute for every man, Garfield said with incredible coolness. Very good. You are real man. You are now five-star general commanded the Constitution with orders. Very well. We must plan strategies. We will meet at Mount Vernon, Garfield ordered. Later on, at Mount Vernon, George Washington was making discussion with Martha Washington. As woman, I hate war, but we need to liberate our freedom, said Martha Washington with feminine instincts. It is true. I thought that all hope was lost, but we have a new ace in our holes, said George Washington with confidence. Is this the Garfield? asked Martha Washington with wonder. He is a true miracle man. With him by our lead, we cannot lose. George Washington said with great respect for Garfield. Suddenly there was a manly knock at the front door. There he is. Soon you will see for yourself. George Washington said as she went to door for opening. As George Washington opened the door, Garfield walked in with feet of patriotism. Garfield, it is good to be seeing you on this fine day. Do you care for tea? Asked George Washington with gracious offers. Enough nonsense. Tiny talk is for tiny men. Now is time for action. Garfield said with stoic manhood. I am sorry, Garfield. Please forgive me, for I am nothing compared to you. George Washington apologized with deep sorrow. Do not cry, you woman. Garfield roared as he slapped George Washington in the face to stop his girlish tears. Yes, you are right. There is no time for crying. Please, come to War Room for strategies. George Washington said as he led Garfield to War Room. Garfield came in on War Room, where Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and Benjamin Franklin were also readying. In War Room, there was table with strategies and figures of red coat English and all American Eagle soldiers. Here, Garfield, 
Come, take a look. Please tell us your strategies, said John Adams with planning in his minds. Garfield stared at Table with knowing in his eyes. He then took mighty fist and smashed Tables to pieces, crushing redcoat figures. This is my strategy, roared Garfield, burning with justice. All in room stood up and applauded Garfield's bold move of brilliance. You are courageousness, said Benjamin Franklin with admiration of Garfield. I wish I, wish I was, was as, as much a man, a man as, as Garfield, Garfield, thought George Washington in his thoughts. After meetings, Garfield walked out with George Washington. As Garfield walked with bravery, Martha Washington looked on and admired Garfield's rugged, handsome courage and toned body. Garfield, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Would you like anything for relaxation? Asked George Washington with humbleness. Give me real food for real man and real American. Give me lasagna. Garfield requested with hunger. You have gotten it. Bring out all American lasagna at once, said George Washington with obedience to Garfield. At George Washington's request, red, white, and blue lasagna stuffed with patriotism and cheese was brought out for Garfield's enjoyment. Leave me to my lasagna, commanded Garfield to George Washington. After George Washington left with obeying, Garfield spent his relaxing time eating lasagna-filled America. As Garfield enjoyed his lasagna, he heard sexy music and smelled perfume coming from other room. What is that sex beat? Garfield wondered as he went for exploration. Garfield went into room for seeing and saw Martha Washington on bed of roses and holding flour in her mouth. She was in sexy lingerie, which showed off hot body. There was sexy champagne there for drinking, and room was filled with romance. Garfield, I am hoping that you would come, Martha Washington said with desire. I cannot resist sexy scent of hot American woman, Garfield said slyly as he sat down on bed, picked up champagne bottle for opening. Garfield... When I see you, I have felt the feelings inside my body. I sweat with patriotic desire, said Martha Washington as she rubbed Garfield's back. No more worrying, my colonial cupcake. I will start a revolution in your body, Garfield said as he tore his shirt to reveal perfect manly muscles. Oh, take me now and show me your musket said Martha Washington, taking off nightgown to reveal sexy, supple orbs. This gun never needs reloading, Garfield said with wink as he undid pants and embraced Martha Washington for serious loving. They embraced and melded bodies for intense loving shaking with passion and vigority. Come, visit my Washington Monument. It is free of charge said Garfield with seduction as he thrust into Martha Washington with his mighty hips. Garfield, you're making me see fireworks, cried out Martha Washington with ecstasy. I'm going to liberate your body with pleasure, Garfield said as he licked her all over. Come to me, my lover man, shouted Martha Washington as she felt Garfield firepower invade her base. Their lovings continued on to the night, and their shouting of ecstasy was being heard louder than gunshots of war. The next morning, Garfield and Martha Washington awoke in bed in each other's arms, savoring moments. Garfield, you made me feel like new woman. Must you fight? Can you not stay here with me, where we can create patriotic pleasure? Asked Martha Washington with longing. Sorry, sugar cubes. But I am warrior. Land of America needs my man muscle more than you, Garfield said with determination. Then, with suddenness, George Washington walked into room to alert Garfield of happenings. Garfield, it is urgent. Redcoats are attacking Boston City, USA, George Washington said with panic. It is time, Garfield said, putting on manly leather gloves for fighting readiness. Garfield, please be careful. If you are injured, my tears would scream with crying. Martha Washington cried out with worry. 
chill out, pussy boots. When I am back, I will be giving you something to cry about. Garfield said coolly. Huh. Oh, Garfield. Swooned Martha Washington with swooning. Enough of the silly chatting. Let us ride, said Garfield as he boarded his mighty shimmering stallion. Garfield and George Washington rode to Colonial Battlefield, where Redcoats were marching with invasion. Invade America! You take all the lasagna! Ordered Redcoat Commander with wickedness. The liberty of lasagna will not be stolen by fiends, roared Garfield as he took out his desert eagles for firing. Garfield! cried out Redcoat soldiers with fear and despair. These colors do not run, and neither do these bullets, said Garfield as he rained storms of lead down on Redcoat armies. After Redcoat army was defeated, Garfield approached Redcoat commander, who was cowering with surrender. Garfield, I am defeated, but war is just begun. Soon American lasagna will be property of king, declared Redcoat commander with defiance. I am seeing you are liking the wearing of red. Let me make your face match your coat, quipped Garfield as he shot Redcoat Commander's face with his desert eagle. Good job, Garfield. You have fought back invasion, said George Washington with gratitude. In distance, figures came to Garfield. It was John Adams and Abigail Adams, ready to give Garfield congratulations for victory. Garfield! You are true American hero. With your help, American lasagna will be free from imperialism. Thanked John Adams with heartfeltedness. No problem, but war is just beginning, said Garfield with steadfast strength. As the men talked of men's business, Abigail Adams eyed Garfield and could not stop her heart for desiring him. Abigail Adams noticed minor scratch on Garfield's large shoulder and knew what to do. Garfield, you are injured. Let me take good care of you, said Abigail Adams as she led Garfield to nursing tent. As they entered, Abigail Adams turned on her cassette player to Loverboy and pulled Garfield next to her. You look tense. Let me rub you for relaxation said Abigail Adams with whispering into Garfield's ear. This is good, but the muscle that really needs relaxing is down there, said Garfield, pointing to his pants. I see it is time for mouth massage, said Abigail Adams with lust. You have been naughty, girl. Time for some corporal punishing, Garfield said sexily as he put Abigail Adams on lap and spanked her. Garfield, spank me with meteor force. Abigail Adams cried out in ecstasy. Garfield spanked Abigail Adams with mighty hands, bringing her spanking pleasure of the highest quality. Meanwhile, in the land of England, King George III was lounging in throne room of silk and sin, swimming in gold and stolen lasagna. While King George III was lounging, Minion came in for reporting. Master, I have bad news. Our invading soldiers have been defeated by force of might, cried out Minion with cowering. What say you, you grub? shouted King George III with raging anger. It is true. Colonial forces have Garfield on their side, said Minion with crying. If this is the case... Then it is time to step up the crank to eleven, said King George III with snarl. What will we do with battle plans? asked Minion with wondering. It is time for full-scale invasion with my lasagna-powered mechanical monstrosities. Power up my airship at once, ordered King George III with finger pointing to sky. Yes, master, responded Minion with obedience. Soon, America will be my playground, and its lasagna will be mine. Not even Garfield can stop me. <laughs> Cackled King George III with sinister evil. Meanwhile, 
Back in America, Garfield and Abigail Adams were enjoying intimacies. Abigail Adams was exhausted with pleasure. Garfield could go on longer, but did not want to kill her with exhaustion. You play rough, and I like that, said Abigail Adams with satisfaction. I fight hard and play harder, said Garfield with a wink as he sat back and smoked lasagna cigarette. After a moment of relaxing, Abigail Adams got up to make morning cup of tea for her man Garfield and wanted making it right. How are you wanting your tea? asked Abigail Adams with dutifulness. I like my tea like I like my women, sweet and creamy, said Garfield as he slapped Abigail Adams on rear with flirting. Oh, Garfield, you know just how to make me feel like a lady, said Abigail Adams with blushing. All of a sudden, moments of romance were interrupted by emergency sirens which signaled invasion. Time to earn my payment, Garfield said with clenching fist and loading desert eagles. Garfield, I know the destiny of the fighting man is to fight, but please be careful. I will pray for your safety, cried out Abigail Adams with sad acceptance. Garfield looked at Abigail Adams with chiseled face of stoic manliness and opened his mouth. Pray for my enemies, Garfield said with calm coolness as he walked off. Garfield traveled to White House, which was being attacked by giant mechanical redcoat with laser musket. Feed me, meal of lasagna, demanded robot redcoat with mechanical voice. The only meal you will be served is Fist of Vengeance, served extra cold. Garfield roared as he plunged manly fist into Robot Redcoat's giant mechanical heart. Looks like this meal has given you heartburn, clipped Garfield as he crushed Robot Heart in his hand. Ah! Cried out giant Robot Redcoat as it exploded in shrapnel and debris. Garfield stood on robot debris, celebrating victories of battle, but soon he heard noises. It was English airships surrounding him. Their cannons were aimed at Garfield with accuracy of pins. Then, with wicked entrance, King George III rode on flagship. Ha ha, Garfield! Behold the chariot of your death! It will be last sight for you as you are dragged to hell, snarled King George III with madness in his eyes. All hope seemed lost, but all of a sudden, familiar voice was heard by all. Amaku! It was John Arbuckle, riding on Bald Eagle and carrying the Liberty Bell. This bell is tolling for you, cried out John Arbuckle as he rung Liberty Bell, sending shockwaves everywhere, stunning redcoat armies. Thank you, John Arbuckle. Now the turn is mine, cried out Garfield as he lunged fist into sky with speed of soaring hawk, causing hurricane tornado to form, sending redcoat battleships to destruction, leaving only King George III. My fist is a Category 6, said Garfield as he looked on at destruction. Garfield turned to King George III, ready to make him pay for the sins of his crimes. You are cur! I am King of England! Kneel before me! roared King George III in defiance. You are forgotten. You may be King of England, but I am King of Liberty! declared Garfield as he took King George III by neck. Let go of my royal neck, you peasant man! yelled out King George III in protest. For crimes against humanity and lasagna, I judge you guilty, said Garfield with mighty justice as he tore King George III's head off. Looks like you have lost your head said Garfield with coolness as he tossed King George III's body on Lady Liberty's torch. Ah! cried out King George III as he burned in Lady Liberty's torch. Order of Grilled King, extra crispy, quipped Garfield as he turned away. 
At King George III's fiery endings, remaining redcoats cried out in despair for their fallen leader. No, what will we do? Our king is gone, weep the English soldiers in sorrow. You must look forward for days of tomorrow. Your king was mad with power and blind with madness. He could not see his path was path of ruining and chaos. Garfield lectured with calm wisdom, filling Englishmen with hope. Thank you, Garfield. You have filled us with inspiration of better tomorrow. We will rebuild our country of England in your honor, said the English soldiers with gratitude as they went home to England for rebuilding. In distance, Garfield saw figures. It was George Washington, John Adams, and Benjamin Franklin coming in for congratulations. Garfield, you have saved America. Thank you, said John Adams, shaking Garfield's hand. Garfield, you have taught me true meanings of manhood. Will you not stay and rule this country as first president? George Washington asked with begging. I'm sorry, but desk jobs are for broken down old man, not man in prime of virility. Garfield responded with declining. Very well, Garfield, but at least enjoy Lincoln Bedroom for personal enjoyment, said Benjamin Franklin as he tossed him the keys. Thank you. I think I know good uses for this, Garfield said with smirk as he put his arms around Martha Washington and Abigail Adams for walking to Lincoln Bedroom. George Washington, John Adams, and Benjamin Franklin gave Garfield thumbs up as he walked to Lincoln Bedroom for lady pleasuring. When Garfield entered Lincoln Bedroom, Abigail Adams and Martha Washington sat next to him on both sides, eager for sexual satisfaction. Garfield, you have flowered my womanhood. Now I need you to water me with loving, said Martha Washington as she chewed on Garfield's ears. Yes, Garfield, you have filled my hearts with your love, and now it is ready to explode, said Abigail Adams as she brushed Garfield's hair with tenderness. No problem, my foxy first ladies. I may not be president, but I will be making you my secretaries of sexy, Garfield said as he climbed on Martha Washington and Abigail Adams for lovemakings. As Garfield began his patriotic duties, he heard someone enter room. He turned around, and hot and eager and sexy woman was standing there. It was Lady Liberty. Garfield, I have been holding this torch for you, said Lady Liberty with searing desire. I have another torch for you, but it might be too hot for you to handle, said Garfield with seduction as he took Lady Liberty into his love nest for maximal lady pleasing. Let our love be so hot it melts through earth, said Lady Liberty as she ran her hands on Garfield's manly body. With these words, Garfield and his Liberty ladies made love of passion that sparked the skies like fireworks as they rubbed their bodies like sand on water. Garfield delivered pleasure into their bodies like manly post office man, delivering package of love explosion. Their love exploded like cannonball shots into the night and went on for hours and days. The end? <laughs>